Our next guest has already received a White House briefing on the intelligence. With us now is Texas Congressman Michael McCall. He is the ranking Republican on the Foreign Affairs Committee. He also chairs the China Task Force. Congressman, good to see you. It's, it's a, my understanding you. that you say that, that one of the intelligence agencies, you're not going to say which one, says that this Russian bounty intelligence is, one, not valid, and two, it is not actionable. Explain that for us. What you had, you had a th uh, threads of intelligence coming in that the Russians were putting bounties on uh, working with the Taliban, which would be a, a divergence from where they had been before. They did work with the Taliban to defeat ISIS, but not to kill American troops. So this would be significant. Uh, these threads were coming in in 2019, and then after a raid reportedly uh, at, um, um, after some Marines were killed uh, and they had some detainees. Mm -hmm. uh, this intelligence came out, but another intelligence agency had a very strong dissenting view about the credibility of the intelligence itself. So when you have a, a sort of a diversion or a different point of right. view within the IC itself, the, the briefer really has the discretion, in this case a, a career uh, intelligence officer, uh, had the discretion whether to rise us to the level of the president or not. If it's if it's not if it has a low degree of confidence, then at that point it's it may not be actionable intelligence, and yeah. therefore I can see why they would choose not to brief the president. Um, as I examine this whole thing, though, I think the president did deserve probably to know that this was out there, yeah. only because of the timing of the peace uh, deal with the Taliban itself that was going on literally two days after mm -hmm. this presidential uh, daily briefing came in. Yeah, and I want to put this up on the screen. This is the New York Times reporting, saying they've really kind of confirmed the cash link, saying, quoting here, uh, Ramatula Azizi, a key middleman who for years handed out money from a Russian military intelligence unit to reward Taliban link fighters for targeting American troops, confirmed through a dozen interviews that included U.S. and Afghan officials aware of the intelligence and the raids that it led to it. He was among those who collected the cash in Russia, which intelligence files described as multiple payments of hundreds of thousands of dollars. In essence, they're saying, look, we've confirmed the cash link that these bounties were paid. Your thoughts? Well, it, and I have to talk in terms of it's been reported. It, it has been reported that there was a raid by an, a, a SEAL Team 6 mm -hmm. on a house with 18 arrests, and there were uh, uh, two of these detainees reportedly have been talking about uh, uh, Russia, and then, of course, they find a bag of cash of $500,000. Uh, mm -hmm. That's very significant. And if, if, if they're talking about this coming from Russia, again, Russia has been in, in Afghanistan since 1979. They've been up to yeah. no good, up to mischief. But primarily their connection with the Taliban has been more to defeat ISIS, not to kill American troops. This would be a significant mm -hmm. departure that I think, I think uh, would warrant uh, the president uh, yeah. knowing about this. But again, a career officer uh, decided that it was not, uh, the d degree of confidence was not high enough, right. I guess. Yeah, I just want to jump topics very quickly here because you've come out with a report on the origins of uh, the COVID-19 thing, and I want to put these on the screen for you. And you're finding that the Chinese had enough info to warrant a full public health response as early as mid-December 2019, that they actively engaged in a cover-up to limit the spread of information about the virus. The efforts included punishing doctors, disappearing journalists, censoring the Internet. And despite warnings from a collaborating center, the World Health Organization chimed, claimed for weeks that human human to human transmission was not occurring. You're saying that China covered this up and that cost uh, tens of thousands, millions of lives. Who knows? Final thoughts. Our, our, our report reads almost like an indictment. It's very factual. You know, they detained all these doctors in the beginning trying to tell the truth that there's a new SARS-like virus, which required, you know, 24-hour reporting. But instead, the Chinese Communist Party detains them, gets retractions. They go into mm -hmm. laboratories, destroy lab samples. And then when it comes to the human-to-human -human transmission, uh, they, uh, the World Health Organization gets completely duped by uh, President Xi and the Communist Party, I think in large part because Tedros is their candidate to head up the WHO. So he parrots the lie that it's not human-to-human, -human, even though his de own WHO expert is telling him it's human to human in, in, on January the 14th. Then they have this big spring festival, five million people travel out of Wuhan throughout China mm -hmm. internationally. At this point in time, it could have been contained, but instead it went from an epidemic to a global pandemic. Yeah. 
I think uh, China is responsible. The Communist Party is responsible. They need to be held accountable. Yeah, and I just want to note the report also says that you believe this did originate in a in a Wuhan lab. It wasn't genetically modified or genetically engineered, but it did originate from the lab. Congressman uh, McCall, thank you for joining us, sir. We appreciate it. Well, it, it, it could have been accidentally leaked like it was in 2004 with SARS. Yep. Uh, there are a couple of theories on that, but thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Congressman.